Now, just a couple days ago, we mentioned that we were going to do a series called The Big Three. Everybody knows about it in the backpack community. I say everybody, maybe not everybody if you're new. The Big Three is going to be your sleep system, your shelter, and your pack. Guys, today we are talking about part number one, that is your sleep system. I'm Taylor and welcome to Southern Hike. So I say sleep system because sometimes when people say big three, they mean your sleeping bag is your first part. That would be your sleep system. But truly your sleep system comes down to your sleeping bag or quilt, but it also comes to your sleeping pad or however type you pad you lay up under you. And also if you use a pillow, so it's like a complete package. So one of the most important things is to discuss all three of those. All right. So so let's get into it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this right away because it's a four part series and I kind of just want to get to all the topics and make sure we get an understanding of them all. So guys, this is first part of my sleep system. This is something I've been using for a couple years now. It's honestly worked well. I have not bought a lot of other gear in this area because honestly this setup has just worked for me. This is the Nemo Tensor insulated sleeping pad. I have a couple videos on it. Check those back there. I'll try to link them. I won't get into it too much, but this has been a great pad for me. And then this is the Trekology pillow. I've probably talked about this pillow in like five videos now. And I just do it because it's a great pillow and it's super cheap on Amazon. I'll try to link this pillow. Any other gear we talk about, I'll try to link it below. So guys, this is one of the first two things that's worked well for me. And I just want to go ahead and say, hey, here's the things to look out for when you're considering your sleep system. But let's talk about these first and I'll kind of go ahead and briefly go through them. I'm not going to just really bring up specific gear besides what I talked about on mine but I'll kind of mention some things to watch out for. A sleeping pad, now you have inflatable sleeping pads, you have self-inflating sleeping pads, and then you have the old fold-up, like the uh, like the old Z-Pack ones, or I know there's some couple, like Nemo makes one, and then there's ones at Walmart you can buy, and those are the cheap ones. So they fold up, you see them on a lot of people's packs, especially they sit them on top of their packs or underneath under straps. That is the one of the, I guess, lightest, cheapest ways to go about it, but man, one of the most uncomfortable in my opinion. Now, all that to say, there's a lot of backpackers that use that method. So it's all about your comfort level and what you need for comfort. For me, I use an inflatable pad this is probably one of the best I have found. A lot of people talk about this pad, and I just, as I just mentioned, it's the Nemo Tensor Pad. It's, uh, I think it's two or three inches of loft, and then it, uh, it's insulated. It's, I think it's got a 3.5 R value on it. We'll get into that in just a second, and it's worked well for me. Now, everybody is a little different. Some people use self-inflating pads. Those are basically have like a foam core in them, and when you unroll them or unfold them, they basically blow up and they work as a cushion, and you can kind of tuck them down still in your pack and not like one of the foldable pads where you have to basically put it on the outside because it would just take up so much room in your pack. Now, personally, I use this one just because it works for me, but those are the three main types out there. You really have to find your comfort level and works well, what works well for you. And then if you're a side sleeper like me, I mean, I just, I don't know, like just laying on one of those flat pads or even when I was a kid, I had one of the roll up ones that you get from Walmart for like 10 bucks. Man, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and my hip would kill. So if you're a side sleeper, probably be best at looking at inflatable pads. There's some that use an actual blow up motor on or pump you can use, or they, this like the Nemo, they have the inflatable like bags you use. So let me go ahead and show this one brought out. This is the Nemo Tensor Pad. Again, I've said that like three times now. This one is an insulated pad. It has a good R value on it. It's the, I think this is the 20 inch pad. Now, one thing I would say, and I've mentioned this before, is, is if I ever bought this pad over again, which I probably would if it got tore up, I would probably go to the wider version. I think it's either a 24 or 25 inch pad. And that's being a side sleeper. I kind of crunch up anyways, more of a spoon position, and it would just kind of give me more room to spread out. All that to mention, like we'll talk in a future video, is your shelter and being careful of how much width you have in your shelter. I'll talk about that then though. But this is the pad I use. It's worked great. So this is an inflatable option. And then like we talked about the other options. So it's important to, as part of your sleep system to have something to lay under you. And also the other thing to talk about is R value. A common misconception is R value and it's important. So a lot of people don't realize that you need to pay attention to that, especially if you decide you're gonna do some winter backpacking. You want to have something that's gonna insulate you losing heat up underneath this. 
and then you're getting cold in the winter because that can be disastrous. So a pad like this is kind of a good three season pad. I would not use this in like really deep winter temperatures like in single digits or even in the teens. But for me in the 20s and up, it's been great. It works all the way up to like 70 degrees, had no problem with it. I don't really keep anything on top of me in higher temperatures. So it works out well that this R rating at 3.5 works well for me. So I've mentioned it before how much R value is important, but watch out for that as you're shopping for sleeping pads. There's a lot of good uh, graphs online talking about R value and, and what should be the right option for what temperature you're working in. Now, this is the pad. We talked about pillow just a second ago. This is the Trekology pillow. There's a lot of pillows out there. You got some that are self-inflating. Um, you got some that you have to pump by mouth. You've seen me pump this and I'm not doing it today. But this is a pad that uh, it pumps really fast and it's really cheap and it folds down and I just literally lay it like this inside my pack and this goes down on top of my quilt and my pad and then I'm ready to go. So there's a few different ones out there. I know that I have another one from Outdoor Vitals. I have the Thermo Rest one, it's the foam one. But this one works well because it packs good in my pack. Now some people, I will say, do not use a, a pillow. Some people use their puffy jacket. Some people use their pack. If once it's kind of deflated down with all their gear out of it, they'll use it to sleep on if they're trying to just cut weight, but you can do that too. But I would really consider what is the best option for you or like my wife, sometimes she doesn't use a pillow at all. She just sleeps with her head straight on her pad. Some people can do that. Some people can't. Some people like to double up. I've heard Dan Becker talk about his Trekology pillow he had before. And I think he has a thermal rest one now. He doubles those up. I couldn't do that. Just put a crick in my neck. But that just shows how much diversity can play a factor of how people sleep and why it's important to find what's the best option for you. The main, make sure my camera focuses back. The main thing is part of the first part of the big three is your sleeping bag, or we'll talk about in a minute, your quilt. Now it's important to understand the importance of what's going on in your sleeping bag and why you should check out to make sure what you're working with, are you working with synthetic or down? or what is the actual temperature rating. I've mentioned this in other videos to be careful to make sure you see what survival ratings are, what comfort ratings are, and what is the limits of that sleeping bag because some people make the mistake of buying a sleeper pad and I hate to say it that sometimes things like this are marketed at lower temperatures, but those are survival ratings. Those are not comfort ratings. So it's important to know too, if you're a male or a female, that those kind of things factor into it too, that some, a lot, well, I would say a lot of women sleep colder than men do. There is some men that do sleep colder. So you kind of have to weigh those temperature options and find out what's the best information. I know that places like REI are pretty good about specking the real true temperatures, but a lot of companies are good about doing that. Next on the list. Now, this is another big one. This is a quilt. Now, if you're new to backpacking, honestly, a lot of people don't even know about quilts. More seasoned backpackers kind of get into quilts because it's one of the newer things. It's actually gotten really popular and a lot of bigger companies have gotten into it. But quilts basically have an open back on it because basically when you're sleeping on your pad, you're really gonna bottom out any insulation there is or any loft there is in between you and the pad anyway, so that becomes pointless. Well, with a quilt, you cut that bottom part out, you just wrap it over you and most of them have a foot box that can be opened or closed. Like in the summertime, I can basically unzip it completely and it just turns into like a big blanket and or a quilt just basically so you have a foot box and then you can kind of tuck your feet in there to keep them warm and then it opens up and then there's a strap around the neck like these are the enlightened equipment revelation me and Rachel both have one of these and this is a great option as far as a I honestly use this as a three season especially for temperatures we get into but like this is a 30 degree I do sleep very hot so it allows me to go at a higher temperature anyway so that's another thing to consider as far as temperatures this is a down setup so I have to be careful to, it does have water resistance but I have to make sure I don't get it too wet the benefit of synthetic is you don't have to worry about the wetness but the loft of a down setup gives you more warmth. So I know I'm going all over the place, guys, but I just want to explain in these videos things to be looking out for. So you've checked out the, I talked about sleeping bags and now I mentioned quilts. There is a video that I did with, I talked to a bunch of other YouTubers to see what their opinions were. Me personally, I use a quilt for three seasons and in the deep winter, I'll use a sleeping bag. Some years I don't even use that sleeping bag because I just never get in conditions where I really need it. I really start considering a sleeping bag, like a down sleeping bag, a zero degree when it gets down in the teens or lower that's just my me personally you need to evaluate that for yourself before you decide what you're going to do 
that is what works for me. And then the other three seasons I used the quilt. I broke down all the different things about sleep system. There's a lot to it. I know it can be overwhelming. Please comment below if you have more questions. I'm doing these videos just to hit the highlights. So I know I didn't sit here and break down everything to you, but I was just trying to make sure I hit a lot of these things to make sure you watch out for them when you're buying for yourself or you're making upgrades. Now, the more you get into the less of the big box store companies or big, com I guess not box store, but big companies that are like, uh, worldwide, honestly, at this point, it's companies like Offspray and Patagonia and things like that. Um, they have a lot of presence in a lot of places, and so they just kind of get around a lot more and they sell their product, but at the same time, they're not always the best thing. There's a lot of smaller stuff that you, a lot of smaller companies that you can get to that have some really great gear too. When I talk about the quilts, UGQ, when they rate a temperature rating, they're a cottage company, that is the true comfort rating. So that is one of the coolest things about that company. You know that it's gonna be overstuffed and be rated for that actual temperature. So I say that because some bigger companies like to advertise the limit temperatures and so you have to watch out for that stuff just because it works better for marketing just fyi so guys i hope that was informative first part in the next part we're going to talk about shelters so that will be next week i think i'll actually drop that video next tuesday so be looking out for that video if you're watching these videos in the future they should be in series i'll try to link them all below in the description once they're all done that way if you're checking it out later you can kind of go through them all guys i hope you enjoyed this video please like it if you did that's one of the easiest ways you can help us out and if you're just checking these videos out hit the subscription bell we'd really appreciate it we are so happy with all the community we have grown and we were so glad for you to join us guys i hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you next week